In this video, we are going to learn about how you can build a sniper bot for base mainnet. This is a concept video and there are no limits. You can make your own trading strategy and you can also extend the project to your own wants needs. I will add all the relevant links in the description and also the BitQuery Telegram channel link. This video just shows you how you can listen to newly created pools on Uniswap v3 and get the token A and token B address and then swap the to token A to token B. I am setting my token A as width which is wrapped ether because I want to keep the example simple. But if you have many more tokens in your wallet then you can cover much wider range of new pools. To convert your ether to wrapped ether you can go to wrapped ether token contract on base explorer and connect your web3 wallet as I have done already and then put the amount in this deposit. You should have some ether in your wallet already. I am changing 0.002 ether and depositing it in this wrapped ether contract and then I'll get in return this much amount of wrapped ether. I have already done that. You can see the transaction here and I have received the wrapped ether but I'll need to add the tokens to my metamask. For doing that I'll need to copy the wrapped ether contract address and then click on import tokens and then paste the contract address here. This will import my tokens and I'll be able to see these wrapped ether tokens. Now after we have done that let's jump into the implementation here. So as far as the dependencies go I am using TypeScript here. We are also using three Uniswap dependencies and we are also using .env for our environment variables and also ethers. We are also using Axios to make the API call to BitQuery and get the newly created pools data on base mainnet. Our environment variables are as follows. You can get this RPC URL from base docs. I will add the link in the description. Add your own private key which has some wrapped ether on the base mainnet. You will not want to share your private key online. Otherwise you might end up losing your funds. So put the .env and git ignore along with node modules. Here chain ID is of the base mainnet. Here is also the swap router 0 to address. I'll add the Uniswap v3 deployment addresses link in the description. Here are some more configuration options. We will go into details afterwards. So once we have our env file, we are gonna need a way to expose it to our application. So this is a basic config.typescript file. After loading the environment variables, we are exporting them as constants and also configuring provider and signer using ethers. So let's dive into our actual implementation. We start off by importing our get tokens function from our tokens.ts file so that we can get our token pair data of the newly created pool. And then on top of it, we will also import the configurations required to run the swap. So let's go into this token stuff because that's what we do next. So we have this token from the token which we have, the token which we are swapping it to. So the token from is always going to be wrapped ether as I have fixed that in the query. Let's see how we are getting these tokens. So what we are essentially exporting is this get tokens function which is giving us our token 0 and token 1 data. So we grab this token from our uniswap sdk core package and then we build on top of it something called as token with contract. And remember that whether it's wrapped ether or uniswap token it's nothing more than a smart contract. So we not only want a token address we also want a contract instance so that we can call different functions like what is the allowance of a certain address for using the token on behalf of our wallet address and also calling balance of function to know the balance of an address for a token. Here wallet has is a helper function which takes a signer and check if a certain wallet is the specified amount of token. So we are getting these token 0 address and token 1 addresses through this API known as BitQuery's events API. And this query here basically gives us the most recent transaction where pool created event was fired on Uniswap v3. That is when the new pool was created. And then I have used some basic JavaScript to extract the token 0 and token 1 address from the API response. You can get this code from BitQuery ID from the top left button here and selecting this as Node.js Axios. Here you can see the Node.js script to get the API response. Getting back to the index.ts which contains swapping logic, we are running this main function out here. We are running this main function. So what does it do? So the way we want to run the script is going to be ts node and then our file name which is index.ts and then amount of wrapped ether we want to swap for the token one which is I am going to be specifying as 0.001. So firstly if our tokens data is empty then we throw error saying tokens are not initialized. If the tokens data is successfully fetched then we populate our token from and token to constants and then check if we have passed something as arguments in the and then check if we have passed the argument here which is 0.001 or is it undefined and if it is undefined then we throw this error and if we have passed the defined value then we put in the amount in this amount in constant then we check the balance of the wallet address 
for the specified token 0. If the balance that the wallet has is not enough, then we throw an error. So if all these boxes are checked, then we go ahead and start with our actual swap. We use something called alpha router from Uniswap here, which will determine the best route for the swap. You can read more about how it works in the official documentation of Uniswap. Then we use this router object create a route instance. Then we use this router object to create a route which takes the specific details of our swap. What it needs is the specific amount of token we are swapping from. We are using this currency amount here, which we are getting from Uniswap SDK. Second argument is the token we want to swap this into. And we are also specifying here our trade type as exact input. As we want to swap if we want to swap exact amount 0 0.001 wrapped ether here to token 1. But if we had wanted to get a definite amount of token 1, then we would have selected the trade type as exact output. And then we select the recipient of the swapped token. And then slippage tolerance is basically how much price change can we tolerate. We have set it as 5% in our .env file. And then also the deadline for the swap, that is, we have set it as 30 minutes in the .env also. So if the swap happens before 30 minutes, then good, otherwise it will fail. And then we do console.log for the check. And then we check the allowance and if we don't have the enough allowance, we will have to call approve function on the token contract to approve the swap address from to approve the swap address for the amount and value of token zero and then we attend the swap. Then we attempt the swap. And then if we have the allowance, then we call the same attempt swap transaction function outside. This is where we have built the swap transaction object and then populated that swap transaction and then sending the transaction to the network here. Now let's run the script. These are the token 0 and token 1 addresses. Now we are conducting the swap, requesting the with approval, waiting for the approval. We have completed the swap transaction. Let's check this transaction, base explorer. We have conducted this transaction, my address 0x418. Now we should have some, this Bitcoin token, Bitcoin on base. So let's copy this address and import the tokens to see it on MetaMask. Here, this many Bitcoin tokens, which I have just now swapped. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and head over to our telegram channel if you have any doubts.